Okay, hello everyone. I hope you can hear me okay. Uh, if there's anyone watching, if you could just let me know if you can hear me, because uh, I've got a completely new mic set up. For some reason, I was having a major problem with my USB headset recently, um, which kept crashing out while I was streaming, or because I was trying to do too much as usual. Anyway, it's not going to be a very long uh, stream today because um, I'm just getting to grips with this FlyJ Sim-8 Q400, which I used to fly a lot in X-Plane 10. And I think I've said before, um, I, hi, the dirts, can you hear me? Is it coming through okay? Well, like I say, I used to fly this a lot in X-Plane 10. And then when I got my Vive, I think I've said this before, I basically stopped playing X-Plane because I wanted the VR experience. This plane has had a patch for 11, but it's not great. Thanks for that. It's not designed for VR. Um, on the forums, everyone keeps asking about this plane. When's it going to be updated? When's it going to be updated? And uh, they're being a little bit coy about it. Other, they're just teasing that they're planning to do a full... Sounds like they're planning to do a full top to bottom on this plane for X-Plane 11 and bring it up to the standard of some of their other um, recent output. But there's no date on that and no no word. So I thought I'd be see if we could use it in VR. Now I've had to write myself my own checklist based on um, the checklist that came with the plane but also some videos uh, from a guy called Crespi Crespo I think his name is. It sounds like he's a Greek guy and he's worked out how to start this because somehow in X-Plane 11 the start procedure got, uh, got broken. So I'm going to jump in. Um, I'm fumbling around for my... There we go. Right, so we're in the plane. Get myself comfortable. That's better. Okay, so particularly at this airport or any airport with a lot of buildings, it isn't running brilliant in terms of frame rates. Um, I don't know how it's looking for you. It's a little bit, little bit juddery for me in here. So in this... Um, checklist you'll see I've got items in here that are starred now those are changes to or additions to the checklist that came well, from FlyJ Sim and these are the things that make it start in X-Plane 11 now so we'll just crack on now this is the, the main changes you have to turn these generators off and the AC control off otherwise it will not start um, then we'll flick on all the uh, power. Sorry if those warning loud, uh, sounds are a bit loud. They're, they're quite li loud for me. Bus is tied by default. No, I want those closed. The, the checklist in the FlyJ Sim says open those, but it doesn't start if you do that. So APU, get that going. Let it spin up a bit. The generator started and open the bleed now so this is another change um, you have to that one's okay but you have to turn off those air compacts no no idea why but that has broken in X-Plane 11 test our caution panels there we go bleed is one and two min and off and another change I think this is a set of um, no, that's not a change, that's standard. So another thing that went wrong with X-Plane 11 Beta VR1 was that none of these MFDs would work regardless of what you did. Although I did read somewhere they worked at night, something to do with, with the way textures are handled in X-Plane. But when in VR3 came out, the Bell 412 from X-Trident I was playing, the MFD on the co-pilot side suddenly got a lot brighter and it occurred to me that maybe something had changed and lo and behold, when you come into the Q400 now, all the glass works, which is fantastic. So I'm really excited about getting to learn to use this plane again. So where did we get to? I'm not going to check the circuit breakers because they don't work in this model. Stick on some position lights. Get to the next page. Emergency lights are on. Uh, if we run out, we run out. Brake pressure, parking brake is set. Power levers, disc, give these a little wiggle. Yep, yeah, there we go. And fuel off. 
not going to worry about that. Could be rough, so we'll uh, get them to strap in on the red collision light. APU bleed it off. Prop condition levers to feather. Now the big problem with this model I find when using hardware joysticks is that when you pull to idle you will go into beta on this and that can be a real problem when you're flying obviously. I think there's a way of altering it in the plane maker but it does seem an odd decision on behalf of the developers. So start and feather, yes. Ignition normal. Select engine two, start engine two first. And if we've done this correctly, we should get a start and the prop will start to spin. It's gone a bit quiet. Oh. It's looking good and that was that clicking noise if you heard that was the start switch coming back to the middle so that's a good start on engine 2 which you always start engine 2 first on this plane um, on engine 1 we really ought to close that door but it does it automatically so jump back in damn it I keep now VR3 this is something that happens to me a lot I just have to tap this touchpad now in VR3 and I jump out of the plane which is highly annoying. Engine 1 start. Starting to spin up. We can watch this one out the window and we should see the, the entrance way close up as well. Now looking back at this it just gives so much scale to this plane getting in the pilot seat. So there we go and the ramp should come up that was the switch going to back to sensor so that's another good start so now we can do the changes which are put the generators on and the ac control on although i find i still get a generator error for a while uh apu bleed is off already bleeds minimum and on. So we're not going to worry about pushback, so we'll bring the condition lever to maximum and we'll do, seems odd to do this now, but we'll put it on five because I keep forgetting. Auto feather on. Half a page with intro. No, it's certainly not intentional not good it's all good this side bear with me a second well my Streaming PC is showing that it's working the layout correctly, so let me just open up a new window. Take a look. Okay, so the stream is looking good for me. I can see my VR headset on the right bottom left exterior view and Navigraph is top left for me and now we've got an echo so I'm not sure what the problem is there the dirts any better now anyone else having that problem I will continue um, I'm hoping, well sorry for you the dirt, but I'm hoping it's just a problem your end because in fact what I'll do is I'll grab my mobile phone and take a look through uh, the cellular and see what it looks like there. I'm still pretty new at this streaming so 
I can occasionally screw it up. Well, not occasionally, quite regularly screw it up. So it looks alright on there as well for me. Ah, refresh, brilliant. Okay, so you've probably missed a part of that startup. There's a good chance I might do it again. Um, where did we get to? So I've set five degrees flaps indicating. It does seem odd doing it at the gate, but that's the flow of this checklist, and also I keep forgetting to do it. Uh, auto feather I selected. Fuel pumps. Now I think it's these. I need to read the manual again. I think it's those ones. I need to turn on my hydro pressure PTU. It is alive, um, and I'm delighted it's alive because I used to love flying this plane. Um, although it's not study level, it's nowhere near as complete as the Majestic for um, FSX. Rudder, we'll assume that works. This needs to be in taxi, that's the spoilers on the wings. MFDs are set. I'm going to hand fly, I'm not going to worry about the autopilot, I'm still having a spot of bother with that. I've got some massive jobs on FSE lined up on this, just going around Hawaii with the ortho. It's good, you know, 60 odd grand's worth of assignments. And until I can sort the autopilot out, I'm not confident I'm going to be able to complete it. Um, but we'll see. That's why I'm not doing that on the stream today. I'm just going to probably have a go later on. And I thought I'd stream earlier to get out of the way for you guys in America to stream on your Sunday. Ice protection, not going to worry about that. Oh. Brakes work, yes. Uh, Takeoff power, end top. Uh, flying controls. Right, so let's just taxi out. Now, which end do I want to go down? Let's see if plane, plane command works first. Heading 155. Heading 155. Heading 155 degrees. Course 155. Course already set to 155. Brilliant. Now I'm going to cheat here and use explains the map just to tune to the ILS and let's taxi out uh, pink's difficult to read CK acres yeah it, it was broken a bit um, particularly if you're using the betas but there is a special way of starting this um, in X plane 11 and uh, I'll probably run through it once more when we've had a little takeoff and probably crash it trying to land. So I'll run through it again. So stay tuned. Place the parking brake. Now, yeah, which way am I going? That way. Like many of the payware, I feel like I've forgotten to do something. Let's turn this just because. They're dragging my eye to it. I can't turn the pitos on. Um, just like most payware in VR at the moment, although there is a cabin behind me, I can't teleport into it because the floor is not real as such within VR. Um, so. Okay, the airport's closed for this test, so I'm not going to worry about people coming through. Um, which is a shame, because it would be nice to be able to walk down the... Uh, once we're um, straight and level and on autopilot, it'd be nice to wander down the, the cabin and have a look out the windows, particularly at those massive propellers. I think there's something ridiculous like five meters across is what 15 uh, 15 feet 15 16 feet yeah the display is not lighting up I updated to the latest beta and that fixed it at least it did for me so um, give that a go VR 3 beta seems to fix the PFDs are you in VR CK acres So, uh, again, I need to learn this aircraft again. I'm having a whole bunch of trouble with the autopilot. That could be VR things. Um, also, I've changed my microphone setup. So, plane command was mucking me about for a bit. But this new mic, I've, I've decided to get away from USB 
and uh, I'm using a direct 3.5 jack, how do you pronounce it? Lavalier mic, mic, a lapel mic, and that seems to be working with plain command. Plus, because it isn't a computer resource as such, uh, it, there's no confliction. I think there was confliction between plain command, OBS, uh, and everything else I was trying to. Oh, you're in VR. So, yeah, update to the latest beta. I'm hoping that will fix it for you. See how that jumps back into disk? If I go any further back, that will go into beta. And you can quite easily crash on your um, final approach by accidentally doing that. And you'll see in my, my checklist flow I've written for myself a couple of places it says do not pull to idle. Precisely because of that reason. Now I don't think I turned my taxi. I did turn my taxi light on. Right, so... Parking brake set. Parking brake set. Right. So, where are we? Line up. Anti collision. White. Uh, flight. Get those on, turn that off. Um, check in top. Right. Run it up to 90% and see what happens. At least the parking brake with my toes. I believe there's a sound mod for this, although the sounds are okay, they're not brilliant. 90%, there we go, and it says rotate at 80, but it's quite reluctant to lift off at that point. Where you want it? See, it's not going. Why is it not taking off? Yeah, I don't. I think I think something has changed between X Plane Eleven, where the flight model is different, and I think probably I'm rotating too early. So I'm going to try a cheeky right-hand circuit. Although these mountains come up really quickly, we'll also go to MCL. So you leave all your hardware levers forward, and use those buttons there control your prop speed, the standards. So I'm using about 900 there. So I really wanted to be climbing at about 160. And when we get the call out that we're at two and a half feet, we'll start to do a turn. Two and a half thousand feet. How oh, cool. Yeah, I'm fly. I'm using the Flyb livery here because um, Flyb use a lot of uh, Q400s local flights in the UK. It's a very popular plane in Europe. Um, but we're at KBTM, which is where the FBOs are, or one of the networks within VR Aviation. Sound. Not sure what that was. Flaps, I'm going to break the flaps. Leads on a normal. No, they're on a normal. Oh, too much bank. So, I'm having a lot of fun learning to fly this again, but like I say, I'm not going to attempt any FSE flights on stream with this just yet because. I get myself easily confused having not flown it for a while and VR being quite different for operating most of our planes, our add-on planes. Oh right, they use them in Canada as well. They fly the Q400 between London, London UK and Toronto. Or is there a London in Canada? Excuse my ignorance, I should know, I've got relatives in Canada. Yeah, my wife and I have flown down from 
Gatwick, south of London, down to Newquay International in Cornwall in one of these to see my parents and um, yeah it's a great little plane in fact I've got a little video of that out the window somewhere maybe I'll post that up to my YouTube just shot with an iPhone so let's try that and probably slow this down a bit I don't want to get too quick um, it will race up to 350 plus knots if you're not looking out I'm not sure what the um, what the max cruise speed is I have got some numbers in this check sheet but they're a lot lower than that now I'll just flick through to approach and landing Oop, pay attention London Ontario yeah how far is that that trip and the flight down to um, Cornwall from Gatwick takes no time at all. I mean, it takes you longer to get to the airport and get through security than it does to do the flight. And uh, St. Newquay International, St. Morgan as it used to be known, see it just races away once it gets up and level. I reckon that this is going to be fairly efficient. on fuel because look at our torque I've got the levers pulled virtually back to a quarter and she's holding 260 knots I'm gonna have to slow down otherwise we're never gonna make this approach and I'm dropping I haven't set up a uh, trim or anything yet I'd forgotten it doesn't have a physical trim wheel so I'm having to hand fly this pretty much Need to slow down some more but I'm really really careful about bringing these back because if I bring them back too far it will suddenly go into beta so it's about five percent where it starts to um, get close to doing that jump oh cool yeah nice yeah I like I like prop planes jets are good for getting you there quick but they just they don't have the I don't know the soul or the character of something with a propeller particularly gigantic propellers like this one still I am struggling to slow it down let's try it let's just go straight to five percent really don't want to get any lower than that right Approach mode. Approach hold on. Right, so we've got the flight director on, but the autopilot isn't on just yet. Please slow down. When can I put the flaps out? Oh, uh, 180, so we've got a, quite a bit of slowing down to do. I'll just start a slow, lazy turn and correct it a little bit later. always get this flickering I know it's scenery loading in but it tends to always happen coming into an airport when you really don't want it to be happening and that's almost certainly because we've got to the extents here and it's loading in a load more scenery uh, I'm dropping oh right so we can get some flaps in now get the gear down as well and watch our speed God, VR is cool. Being able to lean forward through the turn like that. I will try, maybe try the autopilot on the ILS just to see what happens. So when I did that last time, it was diving regardless of what I did. Yeah, it does work quite well in VR. Um, obviously complicated airports are going to cause you a problem um, and here's the main thing is I'm never really sure these don't indicate I mean obviously it comes up in here but I'm still not 100% sure that when I try and do something in whoops 
when I try and do something in the autopilot that it's actually going to do what I want it to. So let's try the autopilot on now. Autopilot is on and it's holding. Brilliant! So I just got to watch the speed. I've already dropped too low. Keep it a bit, a bit faster than that. We should be about. Mind you, we're quite close, aren't we? So we're about right. And we have got. We could potentially go to 15 degrees here. This problem in VR, I believe, is a is a known bug, which is um, to be fixed by Laminar. They're aware of it. Whoops! Watch the speed. Um, yeah, give her a go. But make sure you're on the latest beta. Um, if I've done something different, I'm not aware what it is to make it work. But I'm delighted to be able to fly this again. And if I get more confident, there we go, capturing the glide slope. If I get more confident with the autopilot, I definitely will be smashing out some big flights in this in FSC. And I'll be trying that this afternoon without the pressure of streaming. So, I probably want to drop down, get 35 knot flaps in. We're about right on the torque. Whoops, speed is peeling off quickly. Bring a bit more power in. Feels very high at the moment. More power. Are we going to descend? I feel exceptionally high right now. Seven and a half, so that's about, what, well, that's 2,000 feet above AGL here. Um, see what I do not pull to idle there. If I pull to idle, we'll have a problem. I don't think we've captured the glide slope, have we? This isn't working. This is not working. I think I've got altitude hold on or something as well. Altitude hold off. Altitude hold already off. Why is it not descending? Approach mode. Approach hold already on. Right, well that didn't work very well, but then that gives me... <laughs> that gives me an opportunity to do another cold and dark start for you, so let's do that. And then we'll try and uh, capture that ILS again, so bear with me. A right stand. I had a nice stand. What was that one? I'm in the GA, it doesn't quite fit. But um, I can't be bothered to muck around with um, pushback on gates at the moment. The one gate that there is at this airport. Right, let's bring my hardware down again. Back to the first page. Have I asked too much of my PC? Doesn't seem happy. What's going on? Yeah, that sounds like a crash. That sounds like a crash. Yeah. Okay. Bear with me while I have a look and see what I can do here. That is weird. I've been testing this all morning and I have not had this problem. OBS is still running. That will still be running. I don't need that for now. 
Telegraph is still running. So looks like I've crashed X Plane. Potentially Steam VR to a certain degree. Okay. Sort of where I think it's probably Steam VR that's crashed here. Difficult to say. Uh, I can close X plane down. I can't disable the VR headset. No alarms for temperature or anything. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I think I've disabled the VR in X plane. But it does feel very much like X plane has crashed. So, um, yeah, X plane's crashed. Um, right, so we're going to see if we can load it up again. Sorry about this, guys, but it is all beta, and I am trying to do a bit too much with the PC I've got here, or the PCs I've got. And this happens now and again. Let's do a new flight. Up low, dates, start. Once it's loaded, then I will pull in the VR again. No, but it was just to explain. So hopefully you saw the ad that um, was on the front of my intro screen. I, I imagine most of the people watching this are already familiar with VR Aviation Group. But if you're not, uh, it's brilliant. It gives you great community, great support. And it, gives, it gives me certainly a great purpose to what I'm doing, particularly when you join the FSE group. So the best way to find us, if you're already in VS, sorry, already in FSE, search for the groups for VR Aviation and join. This is looking good, this is looking encouraging, so let's enable the VR and minimize that screen. FSE, uh, search for the groups VR Aviation, join us there um, and also go to Facebook and just search for VR Aviators Group, you'll get loads of support there. A bunch of really friendly people, all trying to help each other enjoy this hobby and um, I'm hoping through that, if you're not already, follow Bambino VR on here's the cabin not the best but you know back we are brilliant okay so hopefully OBS is still working yep and we're back in the game so are you still there CK Acres and I'll show you this startup procedure if you missed it earlier these star elements are the bits that have changed um, to make it uh, work in X Plane 11. So normally they would say leave these on, but we turn those off now. Uh, then we turn on all the power. That is loud as hell. Tie's already tied, that's by default. Now this is another change. Keep those closed, don't open those. Uh, and turn these off as well, which is different. From the documented procedure and we want to get the APU on here it's spinning up turn on its generator and open its bleed air got our MFDs circuit breakers we don't need to check them they don't work position lights position lights on uh, and I'm happy to share this um, PDF through the Discord server for VRA. Uh, I'd probably need to put some credits in there just to avoid anyone getting upset. Emergency lights are already armed, yes. Fuel quantity, whatever. Brake pressure, brake is on. Jiggle the levers a bit. 
yeah they're all working so we want it in disk yeah fuel off let the passengers know things are about to happen all on the ground and turn the APU bleed off top conditions leave us to start feather ignition switches both to normal select engine 2 and start and then if that started probably this switch will click back you'll you may be able to hear it but that, I can tell already that's going to start if you get over 100 150 it's going to start it goes very quiet there for a second and you think it's all gone wrong so that's a good start this switch that was automatic I didn't touch that yeah I will share the are you in the discord CK the VR aviators discord or Bambino VR Discord, I should say. Select engine one, and we will watch this one start up. It's a lovely, this is just standard scenery. It's lovely around here. I'm, I've just downloaded Fort Boy 2's auto for this area. That's another little thing to add to the to-do list, which is absolutely gigantic at the moment. There's two, uh, engine one spinning up, and the ramp will come up. It's automatic don't need to do that so we've got a good start on both engines so we can turn our generators on and our AC on APU bleed is off already should have set those to min and turn those on now condition levers to max which is that one just fumbling around for my levers auto feather select get five in already because I'll forget I think it's these fuel pumps on standby hydraulic on and PTU control on boilers to taxi yeah we've got 155 and 155 which is the runway heading already so it's remembered that not going to worry about anything else right okay CK I'll, I'll post it in there So, let the brake off, make sure we're in top, actually I'm going to reset the parking brake, which I can't do, parking brake set, set parking brake, parking brake set, let's get our nav radio tuned, they probably are already, but cheating again by doing this, I love the way you can pop this out, which means you can minimise that one, um, all right. Where's the ILS? There it is. Tune, tune. Bit of cheating there. And let's taxi out again. See if we can capture this. I imagine it's almost certainly me not understanding how the approach mode of this autopilot works because I'm out of touch the other thing that's frustrating is this FMS doesn't work anymore actually let me do this parking brakes on pull the power back uh, and the only way to use it is to bring it up as a pop-up which I think I've set a button for so if I bring up the X playing window on my desktop and press the button it pops up now you can use it here you can use it there but if I undock it which is what I want to do and then minimize that I think it stops working no it's working oh that's brilliant that's gonna save so much overhead oh fantastic so slightly inconvenient but a solution and if OVR drop was slightly better and you could have multiple windows that would be even better. I'm finding the most simple thing is to just share my whole desktop and use it as a, as a desktop. Ah, after about that. Not using it right now. So let's um, turn these on so they go off. That's the parking brake. Release the parking brake with my toes. Get a bit of power in. 
Try not to clip this cirrus. Come on, go. There we go. And she will turn right round one of the uh, external wheels. Great turning circle on this. It's um, for such a big plane. 78 passengers or 78 seats, probably 76 passengers. It can get into some really short strips and stop very, very quickly. I'm going to rotate a bit later. I'm going to wait until about 100 this time. There's plenty of runway here. Again, I've requested the airport is shut for our testing today. So um, we have carte blanche to just blow through this, this runway. And if you believe that, you believe anything. Um, so there you go. Yeah, you can start it cold and dark and the screens work. At least they work for me. And I'm very much hopeful for you, CK, that if you get, if you haven't already, update to the latest beta. Make sure you've also got the XP 11 ACF update from FlyJ Sim on the org, xplane.org. Go to the payware support, go to FlyJ Sim, go to the dash, and somewhere in there you'll find an update file, update ACF file, I believe, for this. Or Go to your download li link and download the latest version and it includes X-Plane 11 and X-Plane 10 versions. Now do not delete all the X-Plane 10 files within the plane. That's where I went wrong and then all my knobs were the wrong colour and everything. You have to leave pretty much everything bar the, the ACF file. Um, and I actually, I'll tell you what I do. If I remember, if somebody can remind me in the Discord if I don't, I will do a screenshot of my aircraft folder within Explain, you know, the actual files, to show you what which files I've got in there and which files I haven't. Um, but yeah, once I can, uh, well, I'm not going to program that autopilot, it takes too long for me. I will use little nav map to output FMS or PLN files or whatever the best way of doing it is into that FMS because it's a long time since I used the FMS and um, we will do some long haul or not even some long haul just some multi hop routes picking up and dropping people as we go and hopefully making some big cash in this although these are flipping expensive by the hour to rent I think the one I'm thinking about booking in Hawaii is nearly 7,000 an hour but with 50, 60,000 of assignments in, I think, six hops, less than 250 nautical miles, we should still make some good money on that. Right, make a wider route in. I'm gonna basically let it roll until it wants to take off. Didn't turn my taxi light on. Never mind. It's uh, close for test. We discussed. <laughs> set parking brake. Parking brake set. Right. Line up. Get them on. Have some white taxi light is already off. No, it isn't. It is. Go for ninety percent. I'm not rotating at eighty. It doesn't want to take off then at all. So let's have another go at this. Release the parking brake and hold it with my toes. Feed the power in. Let go. Tricky to get that ninety because it goes up, and when you let go of the lever, it drops back down again. There we go, ninety. So let's see where she wants to take off with five degrees of flat. We are quite high here, aren't we? I've forgotten that. We're five and a half thousand feet up at ground level at this airport. So let's go for 110. No, does not want to fly. I should have maybe, maybe I'll jump back to Heathrow in a second and see how she goes. Get to 
let's go to 900. This button here will take the props to 900, and this one will take it to 850. And of course, this is full takeoff power, 1020 RPM. Uh, let's do a quick bring the power back. Got our ILS tuned. Crash it at this rate. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, at least I'm pretty sure you can. You just when you're flying for the group, you just have to make sure that it has keep selecting the group also to check that you've still got the plane rented and sometimes you might actually want to cancel it and reselect it at the each stop, otherwise you'll run out of the max rental time. Approach mode. Approach hold on. I feel like there's two, two autopilot modes on at once there. Shocking job of flying this. I don't want to get too high or too fast this time. Where's the map? Brilliant. Lost the map. I just have to use... The X-pad just buggers off sometimes, doesn't it? Excuse my language. Let's fly down the downwind. There's the runway. We we'll turn back a bit left here. I don't want to get too high and I don't want to get too fast, so let's slow down a bit. Still speeding away. It will just run away with you, this plane. Hardly surprising with those huge, huge props. And it's sitting quite comfortably there, with very little input. That seems to be a nice cruising speed. It's creeping up again, though. There's a whole bunch of stuff I should be doing, um, but like I say, this is about learning again, uh, rather than doing it exactly by the book. I just want to be able to take off and land at an airport. Uh, and then this will be the one that I really start doing full sit and stars in. I don't know why I keep... It's rolling right. That, I believe, is the torque effect, so I'm not 100% sure. So I really need to set up, um, thank you, need to set up, um, oh does it, okay, I need to set up aileron, uh, the trims, um, aileron, oh, I can't speak today, all the trims, um, I need more buttons really, because I'm not sure where they are, I think they're on the yoke, so they're probably not something you can use. Need to slow down. Perhaps we were too high for the glowed slope last time. To 184. Twenty five hundred. One eighty for five. Twenty five hundred. All right, so we have a glide slope. Turn into it a bit more. Oh, I've blown through it. Let's see what the autopilot does. It's having a go. No, I'm not going to make this one again. And so more practice needed. I probably need to get further out because I'm way too close. But it says we're on the glide slope by the flight director, other than the lateral deflection. No, we're never going to make that. Right, I'm going to do one more thing, which is take it to a lower airport, probably... Um, Gatwick or something. LL. And we'll just start. Oh, why not? Let's do it properly. A bit closer.
Albert. See if we can get this um, rotate working. Apologies if you can hear my stomach rumbling. I've forgotten to eat. Um, I'm trying to get this ready today. The question is, is this going to crash? Let's play it again. This is the other thing that annoys me about Steam. My hardware interferes with this menu within Steam VR, and I cannot get Steam to just ignore it. Explain to it. Nothing. So yeah, I'll just put a couple of credits into this check sheet to say what it's based on, i.e. the FlyJ Sim and the link to the video that helped me put this together so that I could actually start it up because of the changes. Please don't crash. We're in. Oh, I haven't got head tracking yet. We're in. Brilliant. So let's do this one more time and then I'll call it a day to make way for the guys. America yeah this is causing me a little bit of trouble this airport is a lot more complicated than the last one obviously I'm just doing this over and over again really for anyone who's trying to learn how to do it but also for myself so hello there we are expert again this time that's the other thing I wish I could do I wish I could change the orientation of this occasionally I suppose I can but you know what I mean away oh, uh where do I go to batteries yeah so I'm 4500 wow that's loud so um yeah frame rate is an issue right now but it's mainly because this airport is so much uh, more complicated they're closed what have I missed AP going They had massive he was head tracking just then. Let's turn it on. Don't need to do this, I'm just doing it so I can start to remember. Is it off? That's all working. Air armed. Brake is on. Condition levers feel off. Cruise in red. EPV. Start feather. Normal, normal. Two, start. That's looking good. Or is it? Prop hasn't spun up yet. There we go. There's the prop spinning up. Wait for the switch. Back to two. Start. Sorry. Back to one. Start one. Whoa. That was horrible. Yeah. There's too much going on at this airport. All the settings I've got. Or where I normally fly. I'm normally flying helicopters in the, is in the, helicopters in the mountain. I'm going to try and switch it up. I'll do helicopters one weekend and um, fix wing another weekend so it doesn't get a, too repetitive. But I love flying helicopters in VR. It is fantastic. That's interesting. They were on and it still started. View of lead is off, minimum and on uh, the frame rates are horrific right now. Condition lever max. I need pushback first. Let's get a pushback. Uh, how can we do that easily? I could go into beta, but I won't. Let's request ground service. Okay, I'll send the trucks. And we'll get a straight pushback. Don't know what's behind us. Let's have a look. Nothing. Why do they put those menus right in your face? Oh, 
load truck. Where are you? There you are. No, that's not it. That's a baggage car or something. Or a clown power unit. Break back. Okay, push cart coming. Yeah, it's an interesting thing that. Um, I've noticed it when I'm watching Bambino now, we're all using this OpenVR capture. The OpenVR capture is smooth as silk. They, I had a massive, massive delay in head tracking there. So the, the graphic pipeline is working re really well. So I'm really not sure what's happening. Are you going to push me back? Oh, I can't be bothered to wait for this guy. Let's just put it in beta and go backwards. Or are you just going to take the front of my plane off? Thought so. Let's just reverse out of here. Max and full beta. Here comes the truck now. Typical. I'm going to bring that back there. Take the brakes off. Here we go. Probably do it. Okay, give me a second to clear. All right, calm down, love. Condition levers, prop levers forward, all left, and a bit of brake. Walk me in taxi. See, five degrees. Whoa, calm down. Yeah, terrible frame rates right now for me. Those ons have been... Probably open those now, I guess. I need to check on that. Yeah, I'm not sure... Unless it clears up by the time I get to the runway, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, because with the delay in head tracking I'm getting right now, there's a good chance I'm going to... Start getting motion sick. I don't generally. Um, having been playing simulators even on large flat screens for a long time, I seem to be relatively immune to VR motion sickness. But when it's as bad as it is occasionally right now, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. And when that sickness comes on, you've got to stop immediately because it takes some time to go away. Now, let's get the ILS tuned. So, bring up the map. Let's take a guess. We're going to be... I think it's probably that one we'll come in on. Minimise. That's on, that's already on for some reason. Taxi. It's on. A lovely livery on that in New Zealand. black and the fern leaf and the Maori symbols are just just graphically very nice simple but very effective right. I'm going to take a short I think this will probably take off a lot easier this time because I'd forgotten I was five and a half thousand feet above ground level at KBTM so I'm not even going to go right to the end of the runway. I think I'm a fair way down the runway. I'm always really cautious when I pull the throttle back. If I just go a little bit further, the whoosh, straight into beta. 
Oh, actually, we're right at the end of it, aren't we? That's why I chose that ramp. It seems to have set up the course for that IMS automatically, which is quite nice. I need to remember to go a bit further downwind before I turn in. Altitude 3000. Altitude 3000. Altitude 3000 feet. I'm tempted to try to climb out with speed hold on. While I was trying it in my testing and I could not get it to do what I wanted to do, even though in the PFD it was saying it was doing it. So potentially some little issues, but much more likely it's just me being a fool. I should imagine that my bottom left external images the PC is probably complaining about frame rates and time being too slow. I mean, this is horrific for me right now. Oof. Get those on, get that off. That on white. Oops, should have done that before. Probably missed something else. They're on. Right, let's see what happens. More 90. Right, let's see if she'll take off at 80 this time or rotate at 80. Should rotate at 80 and take off about 110. So let's rotate. Very sluggish. But yeah, no, still on the ground. No, something not right here it is not taking off when expected. And I'm all over the place because of the flame frame rates. Oh, God. Yeah. Starting to get a little bit queasy at the moment. Put the flaps up too quick, but I ripped them off in my testing, so I'm a bit cautious about it. Let's see if we can actually capture the ILS this time. To climb. I'll do my turn now. It's way too much. Easy to see where the turn rate indicators are on that PFD and a VR. I want to get to 3000 and then I'll go up quite a long way past the airport and come back to it. Put my flaps up, didn't I? Yeah. Heading 9-0. Heading 0 9 0 degrees. Heading hold. Heading hold on. Get the autopilot to speed hold. Speed hold on. So why are you diving then? I've got the speed hold on and heading hold on and it, it's diving. It is pulling the trim back slowly. Maybe I just need to trim it first. Trim adjustments are very slow. There we go. Altitude hold. Altitude hold on. There we go, so that's 3,000. Need to cruise on the prop, bring the power back. 
Yeah, you have to be ahead of this plane on the autopilot. It seems. I don't know what cruise talk is. Hey, Bambino. Nice of you to join us. I'm, uh, I'm going to be out of your way, guys, in America soon. This is my third takeoff in this um, from Cold and Dark. And we're getting somewhere. But understanding it doesn't seem to want to capture an ILS, but probably my fault at the moment. And I've chosen a wrong area. There's a bit too much going on in the world in London. And I'm suffering with frame rates. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I really can't wait to uh, relearn this plane. I was just saying earlier that um, I've already, over a course of two or three days, managed to rack up. I haven't flown them yet, but in my assignments list, I've got nearly nearly 50 grand's worth of assignments for this plane, just hopping between the islands in Hawaii. And that entire route is less than 250 nautical miles. So even with $7,000 an hour, yeah, it, it, it's working pretty well now. Um, like I say, the autopilot is behaving strangely. I really need to set up trim buttons um, and get ahead of the plane on the autopilot because you can see the, the trim adjustments are very slow on the autopilot. So you kind of need to be where you want to be and then ask the autopilot to fly it straight and level at that point. It's handy using the speed hold mode for the climb up to about flight level 100. Why do I mean flight level one? Oh, I mean 010, don't I? Well, look. Like I say, I'll share this list I've constructed. No, we've gone skip past it already. I've got some of the stats here. So these are recommended cruise speeds at these flight levels and I've got some notes on the climb out as well I thought I did anyway yeah up to flight level that's wrong no that's right up to flight level 100 160 and then above that you use 210 or, or pitch hold at 5 degrees um, but you just have to keep a, a good control on the throttle because she will run away with you really quick these massive five, uh, five meter propellers, she accelerates like a something rude off a shovel. So, yeah, and she's nice and quiet as well, which is nice. Apart from the warning beeps, they're pretty loud. So, I wonder how far past I should go. We're at 3,000, aren't we? So. I'm going to give it a bit longer before we turn around. See if we can see if we can finally capture an ILS and land. And there's London City Airport down there. Short little strip that fires up. If you come this way, if you're going westbound, you come over the the financial district down there in the Docklands. Um, back towards Gatwick and onto Heathrow. But uh, I'm really looking, I know it's difficult to find one, but I'm really looking for the group, um, looking forward to having the group having somewhere in the south of England. Because flying over Europe is, is a lot of fun. Right, I'm going to try uh, heading 270. Heading 270 degrees. And then we pick up the ILS. I need to slow down. That's the first thing. And she's difficult to slow down. Very difficult to slow down, this plane. Right. Way too fast. Be careful we don't drop into beta. Big note. Do not pull to idle. I'll probably highlight that because if you do, you will be falling out the sky quicker than you can say boo as it slams into. Um... Where's she going? Yeah, as she slams into reverse. Uh, like I say, I think there's a fix for that. I think you go into Plane Maker and edit a couple of parameters, and if I manage to make that work, I'll let you know about that as well. 
because there's nothing worse than just coming back too far on your hardware throttle and it going into to beta. Approach mode. Approach hold on. Oh, is she going to do it this time? Get some flaps in now, we're low enough. Looks like we might be on. Oh, important things. So 160 are sticking 10 degrees. He is descending this time, but she's reacting very, very slowly. But it could be that the flight sim is running slowly at the moment because of the frame issues I'm having. Shouldn't have chosen London. You probably missed it earlier, anyone who joined, but I started at KBTM because, you know, it's in the group and I thought it would be fun to see this plane there. But forgot that that was five and a half thousand feet above sea level and wondering why it wouldn't take off at the speeds that I was expecting. So we've come back to Gatwick and she takes off really nice, well not quite right, there's something not quite right, um, probably the flight model that's changed between when this plane was originally produced by Fly J Sim and X-Plane 11. She seems to not want to rotate where the manual says which is 80 knots well, she will rotate, but she'll just drag her ass. So I need to review the forum, see what people are recommending. 140 down to 110. Quite a long way out. We might actually land this time, guys. Well, I thought we're too high. It looks very high, but we're only 1700 AGL. I doubt Gatwick is very high, maybe 700 feet. I guess. Hang on, we could probably check that out. Make sure my speed's not going to drop. Damn it, I've done it again. That is happening so often in VR3. It's frustrating. Sorry. You can't drag the map. 83 feet, so it's. It should be okay. We're on the glide slope. Uh, keep the speed up. Keep it about there. Eighteen. Eighteen's working. It's holding the speed, and no, it's not. Try twenty. Twenty on the torque, and she's holding a speed. No, she's increasing. Twenty twenty one ish. Uh, twenty holding the speed. It does feel high, I must admit, but that says eight hundred feet. Unless I've messed up. Ah, there we go. What do I say to plane command to reset the uh, altimeter to two nine nine two? I'm using clear weather. Altimeter 2992. Altimeter 2993. That's close enough. Right. We're at 2,800 feet now. <laughs> so yeah. I had a problem with Plane Commander, the other, the other microphone I was using during testing. I was trying to set the course and it was setting altimeter and doing all sorts of other things. So that explains that. So we're 2,700 feet, 124 knots, glide slope and ILS captured. And I can't zoom in at the moment, I'm using a different, uh, the controls they use for helicopters are different. 2, we're at 2,500 if you heard that. The controls they use for fixed wing are different from helicopter and I don't have a slider available on what I'm using right now. Um, and I don't want to introduce the other control that has the slider on it's acting as my collective and I'm pretty sure if I use the slider something will happen to my power or condition levers. Uh, I must learn how to set up joystick profiles for aircraft so I can just leave everything plugged in it's always in the same socket all the time and we don't have that problem. I can see the Pappy lights now they look good. We're definitely on the glide slope. Speed is increasing so I'll just 
Let's see the torque's cracked up again. That probably has a lot to do with my um, little side tech quadrant being a little dirty in the uh, pots. It is a great learning experience. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, and I, this is the plane I will use for SID Star, IFR, IMC stuff uh, when I really want to make life difficult for myself. We're going to relearn the aircraft first. I don't know if I saw you, I show you were around, Bambino, when I discovered this earlier. This FMS does not work. Um, it's not a problem, it's expected behaviour. So you have to have a button. Don't want the menu. So you have to have a button to bring up the FMS on the screen. But, let's grab my mouse quickly so I can do this quickly. I should be able to decouple that from the window. There we go. Means you can minimise that. And now I have a fully functional FMS here. So, should be able to do some long haul. Better start paying attention. So, yeah, I've got this flight plan. Flight plan, company routes. Not going to let me do it. I've got some FMS saved. Uh, what's the speed? We can slow up a bit now. We are a couple of hundred feet away from getting full flaps in. Uh, my head tracking is all over the place as this airport comes in. It's weird that it doesn't affect the open VR capture window that goes out on the stream. I mean, it's great, but um, it's interesting that. I think you've mentioned it before. Yeah, the FMS is too much for me as well. They're not very intuitive at all. Get full flaps in. Keep that speed up. No, no, I'm losing it. I'm losing the plane. I'm losing the plane. Come on. There we go. Pitch is coming back down again. Right. I have completely forgotten how to fly this. Now, the flare on this is very gentle. Two to three degrees flare at 20 feet. I need to stop moving my head, otherwise I'm going to be sick. See if I can fly it in. Autopilot off. Autopilot off. Right. Can't talk, concentrating at the moment. 500 feet call out if you didn't hear that. I think I was running on landing on the run wrong airport by that flight director bar at the moment. Well, I've caught a beautifully trimmed. He's basically flying herself, more or less. Now, what do we remember? we remember not to pull back to idle. There's someone on the runway, but we're just going to smash straight through there. Yep. Oh, traffic alert. Brilliant. This plane does more than I thought. Now, I've got to remember not to pull this all the way back, because it will go into beta before we're on the ground, and that pro tip, you don't want to do. I'm way off center line here, so the ILS was correct. So about 2% Oh, bit heavy, bit heavy, but we made it, and the frames are awful. Into beta, put the brakes here. See how quick this thing can stop? Check this out. Out of beta. And we can make the next exit. Thank you. Yeah, I'm... I'm delighted to have landed. It's the first time I've landed it in VR. So when we've stopped, I'm going to put the parking brake on. Set parking brake. Set parking brake. Parking brake set. And then we will... You've got to, haven't you? You've got to have a, a replay from the side of the runway. It's, um... Where do you think we landed? It's part of the rules for Twitch streaming. A flight sim, isn't it? Watching your... Landing. So let's try that. Now I, I tend to look away. I don't like. It's not that it makes me ill or anything. I just I don't want. I want to uh, assess the landing. Oh, we need to be a bit closer then. 
pause. No, not what I wanted to do. Now where are we? <laughs> Frames are horrible. It's gonna be a long walk. Where's the wrong way? Over there. Yeah, I don't know if any, maybe it's just a Vive thing, but teleporting out of the plane by accident is a big deal. Oh, this plane looks great. Frames are awful. Yeah, I need to turn my setting down to use this plane. Not bad, you know. Let's have a look here, and then we'll call it a day. I look. F oh, sugar. Look forward to watching some of your guys' streams later today. Where's she going? I thank you all for joining me today. It was a learning experience. Um, not supposed to be professional. Oh, the frames are appalling. What a shame. Bit of a bounce, but that'll do. So, I'll make a couple of changes to this. Um, let me pause this. I'll make a couple of changes to this um, this uh, checklist I've or check flow list that I've done. Um, add some credits to it because I don't want to pee anyone off. And hopefully that's going to help you start this plane in VR and land it. What was the other thing I was going to do? Look at the plane maker settings about stopping it going into beta with your hardware levers at idle. If I can work that out. Also there's a sound mod which apparently um, makes a big difference. Another thing if I can ever get that sorted I'll, I'll let you know about that. There was something else. Something else I was going to share. The screenshot of the aircraft file so you know which files I've deleted and which ones I haven't to make it work. Um, thanks so guys I really enjoy doing this this is only my second time having a proper go at it and um, I'm going to try and smash out those uh, FSE flights in Hawaii so look out for the logs see you all soon thank you very much